Good morning, my brothers and sisters of Christ. I greet you with the love of God and the mercies of his son, Jesus Christ. It's an awesome day. It's a wonderful day. The Lord has been good, mighty good to us. Uh, I know that you are celebrating what the Lord has done. Uh, Just on yesterday, the Lord has blessed us and saw fit to uh, bless us. And so I want you to keep that spirit that you have lifted, and I will not hold you long, but I I do want to talk with you for a few moments. For a few moments, we want to talk about the word as it relates to us. We want you to stay safe. We, We want you to keep heart. We want you to be vigilant. And so we, we, we want you to just join us as we seek the Lord in prayer that he will continue to do wonderful things in our lives and for our loved ones to commu- and for this world. Pray for one another, thanks of God. Pray. Continue. Don't give up. Stay in the fight. Keep seeking the Lord and keep moving forward. Shall we pray? Eternal God, we Bless your name, because there is none like you nowhere. You are so kind and so wonderful and so loving to we, your people. We would ask that you meet us today as we journey through your word. Teach us your ways, O God, that we might be pleasing unto unto you. And grant us the wisdom how to walk in and out amongst people. Give us a a spirit of love and concern. Let us not look at each other with a frown, but let us greet each other with a smile. Bless us now and we shall be blessed. Open us up. Touch this mind and these lips of clay as I speak your oracle. And we ask that you bless the ears of the same material that they might hear and the heart of flesh that they might pant after you. And we will give you praise forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and sisters, I am so excited about what the Lord has done and what the Lord is doing. I can't hardly contain myself. Yet we find that there is work to do. It's not a time to become relaxed. It's a time to rejoice. And then we must roll up our sleeves and go to work like never before. All that we have petitioned God for, you will soon find that the locusts and the cake of worm will destroy. So it, 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 it It is time to rejoice yet. Uh, With that in mind, it is time to go to work. Go to work for what is just, right, and true. If you would turn with me uh, in your Bibles to the gospel writing of Matthew, Matthew gospel, and we just want to take into consideration As I read this verse, it is found in Matthew again, chapter 6, and verse 33. Verse 33. I will do that, but I will ask in your leisure time that you would begin at verse 25 and and read all the way down to verse 34. For your consideration, would you? These words are found, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. I want to talk to you for for a few moments uh, from the subject. Seek it and you will find it. Seek it 
curse, and you will find it. It is important to me as I reflect upon uh, this particular portion of Scripture. It's important to me because I remember as a little boy, as a child, as to you growing up, <clears throat> so many things we wasn't privy to. And so we played games of old or we invented our own games. One of the, uh, the games that we played, <clears throat> it was very popular then. I, I don't know if the young people or younger people really think about it, have done it, or is it even talked about anymore. But one of the games that we played in our young years was a game that was called Hide and Seek. Without going through all of it, uh, the basis of is that you had someone at it who would stand and count from wherever home base would be. Home base represented a place of security, a place of stability, a place of safety. And while the individual was counting, you would hide and, 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 and in hopes that they would not find you. After the count was over with, the individual began to seek you out. Once they seek you out, if they made it back to the the place that was home base and tapped the home base, you were out. You was out. So ultimately, you had to find a place to hide until the opportunity uh, opened itself where you could run with all of your might get at home base, and you will find safety and security there. And not worry about it because you had made it home at last. For the last four years now, there has been a multitude of people who have played the same game in life. Uh, They have been hiding from... uh, terror, running in distress, uh, simply because it seemed like evil had invaded our space and everything that we knew to be foundational, everything that we knew to have been solid seemed to have come unglued. And I am here to encourage you today that even though for the last four years it has really been chaotic, God himself have heard the cries of his people and just On yesterday, Saturday, it was announced that a man by Biden and a woman by Harris would occupy now the greatest position in the world. Joe Biden is elected to be president of these great United States, and Kamala Harris as his vice president. The cries of his people have gone forth, and God has heard the cries of the people and have given them someone, I believe, that will stir this great United States back to a more lively and healthy country for humanity. P. 
People have suffered. People have died. Families have been torn apart. There are children now who who have been separated from mama. And really, I don't know if they will ever uh, get to see mom again. Little kids, along with uh, homeless people, have found it difficult to live day or night. People have been plundered and built and built and 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 and, and regarded to be absolutely nothing. The rich have become richer, and the fat have gained more weight. They are fatter. They are fatter, and yet uh, it, it seems like the more that you have prayed, it is almost as if God has has shut heaven down and have not heard what you have to say. Uh, but on Saturday we realize that there's a God above our head, and there is nothing that the tyrant could do but tremble. I believe that uh, this man that has been elected for president and this woman that, this woman, did you hear? Woman. This woman of color, the first woman, and on top of that, the first woman of color to be elected to the vice president of the United States. That's, that's trend-setting. That's mind-boggling. That is absolutely out of this world. Because with man... Things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. The keys I want you to take away from the lesson today is that God has our best interests at heart. When we look at this particular portion of Scripture, if you will notice in your Bible, it is in red. red. Red signifies that this is directly off of the lips of Jesus. Prior to that, he gives us some things that we we really need to consider. In verse 33, let's read it again. He says, but seek ye first, first, first things are first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these other things, all of these things shall be added unto you. So the first priority uh, that we need to take into consideration both now and later, is to seek what God's will is, what his kingdom is about. That's the first and foremost priority. He gives us some things for consideration and when he talks about the birds of the air and the lily of the field and why we are worried about this and why we contemplate that, and yet uh, he tells us that even the fowls of the air, though they do not work, though they do not toil, though they do not soar, so nor do they reap or gather it in such a way that God himself will feed them. What is, what is, what is it saying right there? It is saying it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You will... We waste too much time in, in, in raiment on how the outward appearance look, how, how things are to be, how our body is formed, what, what clothing we are to put on. We take special care about 
what we're going to have on the dinner table tonight. But the Bible tells us that God will take care of you just like he takes care of the little bird. That's amazing. That blew my mind because it, 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 it told me that worry brings on frustration, and frustration gets my mindset in a pattern where I can't think clearly, nor can I see or operate at my best because I'm, I'm letting everything blind me from what God wants me to do. He reminds us that if we really think of it, uh, who, who can add one second to your life? Who can, who can build you up? Who can, who can dress you and, and all of that? We worry about these things. But first he says that he wants us to consider that if we would for a little while just think and operate in what he has put before us, first God and his kingdom. His kingdom is not meat and raiment and drink. His kingdom is peace, love, and everlasting life. That's what it's about. Oh, I know that we 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 oftentimes put the attaboy on what we have and what we have acquired and, and all of this, but that's not what God says he wants us to be about first. He wants us to think about the heavenly things because uh, to be for real, you can have money today and money is gone by the night's end. You can have a fancy car today and by the time you drive it 100 miles, it has broke down on you. It has depreciated to a value that if you had knew it before you bought it, you would not have brought it. We build great buildings and all of this. This does not mean that you have made it with God. God wants us to seek his kingdom where we can have peace, where we can have rest, where we can know that in him we can trust. And if we would do those things first, then guess what? All these things shall be added unto you. Does that mean that we become lazy? No, we still have to work it out. But in working it out, God will add to your little stockpile, because you seek him, you seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. That is the sum total of man, to seek justice and to be and to do righteousness, to seek justice and to do righteousness. Now, it's amazing that we talk about all of these things, we talk about it. Lord, teach us to pray. And then when he teaches us to pray, we don't follow suit. But in the prayer that was asked, it, it, it begins with our Father, which are in heaven, holy or how it be thy name. And then he says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So then, if that's important in, in, in the instruction of prayer, uh, Jesus says here to seek ye first the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God cannot come to earth until we submit ourselves to the will of God so that his kingdom will be in us and we will be the custodians of it and share this with other people who are troubled, who are bound, who are disillusioned, who are lost, who are hopeless. We have something to give them. Give them God because the kingdom now resides in you. I, I, I want to share with you how then do you do these things. If, if, if we are going to seek the kingdom of God, how how is this done? Well, it's very simple. We we do it. We just have to realize it and put some mm into it. The first thing I want you to know as we seek the kingdom of God is that we have to pray. We have to pray. Prayer brings us into communion with God, our creator. 
if we become intimate with him, we find communion together with him. That's what prayer is. Prayer is not about all the time asking God for all, for all of these other trivial things. Prayer is meeting God and meeting him in such a way that you are in awe of his awesomeness, of his holiness, of his power, of his righteousness. And when you become a person engaged in communion with God, you see beyond the trivial things, and then you begin to understand, because I am in communion with God, because I'm intimate with God, in prayer, my eyes, I can see a little brighter. My mind, I can understand a little bit more, because now I am not selfish. I am not self-grandizing, but God, bless my neighbor. God, take care of my loved ones. God, bless me indeed, but while you're blessing me, do not leave them out. That's what prayer will do. Prayer will bring you to a point uh, of recognizing the awesomeness of God in all humanity. And that is what has gotten uh, Biden in to the White House. Prayer. Prayer, y'all. Somebody, a group of people, prayed. And after they prayed, they marched themselves down, got their punch, punched their, uh, their, their, their voting ticket and said, we want God to move in the life of a man named Joe Biden so that we might have peace, so that we might be called somebody of worth. That's what prayer will do. Prayer will put will call God to take action on behalf and liberate us from what is wrong. Prayer. So the first thing that we have to understand in seeking the kingdom of God is we have to pray. If Jesus did it, and he's the son of God, and he doesn't do it one time, he constantly prayed, thy will be done. He constantly labored in prayer for people, for humanity, not the selfish stuff that we often do, God bless me with a home, bless me with a car, bless me with a husband, bless me with that, bless me with this. No, God, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Notice now, when you begin to pray, you can put yourself in, in verse 33, when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then guess what? All of those other things that we be so worried about will come to fruition when we begin to pray. The second thing, and I'm almost done here because I want you to see this and enjoy what the Lord has done. The, the second thing we, 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 we want to do when we are seeking first the kingdom of God is that we have to keep the word of God before us. Uh, not not Time Magazine, but the, uh, even though it's good to read, but the Word of God must be first and foremost. That's why you are and I, we are called Christians. That's why we are called Christians, because the Word of the Lord is what we seek in the kingdom, not so much what the newspaper will, will, will read. They confuse themselves. But what God's word has said, God gave us his word so that we can be kept close to him and, and see through, uh, 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 through, through our eyes what God sees. And so in Psalms 119 and 9, it says that the word of God, what is it? It is a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet, according to that word found in Psalm 119. When we read it, we become intimate with the word. 
so that it doesn't matter what's going on around us, we don't become unglued. Trouble will not last always. Begin to pray and begin to read the word of God. Uh, Thirdly, we must worship God. Worship him. And you don't need to be inside of the church house to do that. You can do it right now in your living room, at your kitchen table, wherever you might be. It's a time of intimacy with God, your creator. Worship him. Consider worshiping him in hymns and in song. There's a song inside of you. Sing it so it might be well with your soul. Sing it so that you might get give God the glory. Sing your song. You might not sing uh, uh, like uh, Mariah Curry or Beyonce, but God is not worried about that. He's wearing a, he, He's considering the, 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 the purity of your heart that puts you in the mold of worship. Worship the Almighty and honor him for who he is. And then you will see all of these other things. All of these things will be a part of your life. Prayer and, and reading and, and worship. And then, and, then, and then finally, my brothers and my sisters, on your way to rejoicing, on your way out of worry and anxiety, begin to memorize the word of God. No, you don't mem- remember or memorize the whole Bible, but take one scripture at a time. If it's no more than God so loved, that he gave. Re- remember what he says. And every time you feel anxiety, every time you feel a headache because things seem on, to not be going right, begin to recite it. Begin to re- remember what the Lord has done. Begin to bless his name by remembering and proclaiming his word in your heart. Memorize it. Let it become internal in you so that when you face opposition, you can say like the Lord said, speak a word and it shall come to pass. You have the same ability because you are created in his likeness and his image. Do his will. Seek his face. Speak his word. It doesn't matter what they are saying. Speak that I am somebody. Speak that I will overcome. Speak that we will make it through. Speak that, Lord, bless my brother. Speak the Lord that we shall live and not die and see what the Lord will do. Seek him in the morning and seek him in noonday and seek him before you lay your head down at night. Lord, what is your will for my life? And I tell you, the Lord will make a way somehow. And when you begin to seek the Lord, ultimately, when we close here, we will begin to praise him. And there's nobody around that make you happy. But when you begin to think about the goodness of God, when you begin to think about that you are a child of the king and there is a kingdom that you are in and God has promised you that he will take care of you just like he takes care of the little bird. God will have promised you that you don't have to worry about anything because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and he will clothe you with his righteousness. He will, he will bless you with his benevolence of, good, of goodness, and you will be more glamorous or glorious than Solomon who had everything, and yet he said in all of his riches he was not arrayed as one of these. And I, that made me happy right there. When I begin to think about how God is in the blessing business, if we would about seek him, if we would turn our face from the world, the world is not going to win. For the last four years, you have seen it. The world has backed up with the social injustice, with this downturn of economy, with this systemic 
racism and all of these other things with this coronavirus and all of these things that have plagued us. God has showed his face once again to be true and mighty, and we ought to give him praise because somebody, somewhere, we together have sought the kingdom of God. We have sought goodness over food. We have sought goodness over, over, over plenty. Yes, we have sought his righteousness over our self-reign. And God have heard our prayer. And because of it, because of it, he will repay all that the locusts and tinker were have destroyed. And all of these things, all of these other things, all of these additives, add on, shall be added to you. So my brothers and my sisters, the conclusion is take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take no thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. God is a God that has proven himself over and over again. Praise him and then give him thanksgiving, for the Lord is good. His truth is everlasting, and his mercy Endure it forever. You are a child of the king. You are a child of God. And the kingdom of God resides within you. Rise up from the ash, from the dust. Rise up and roll up your sleeve as a community of believers in God. And let us put our hands to the plow. Together we can make it because we have a God above us that have never lost the battle, will never lose a faith. And though we are in this thing, we have God walking with us, talking to us, fighting for us. Take no thought for tomorrow, but seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek and ye shall find. Today is a day of of great joy because God's people is returning to him. And as we return to God, God will return to us. May you be blessed with a wonderful day. May you be blessed with a beautiful evening. And may the sun just stand up just a little while as you reflect upon how God is so good to us that he looks beyond our faults and sees our need. Now, ain't God all right? Isn't he all right? He's a way maker. He's a bridge over the troubled water. He is, I am that I am. There is no other God greater than the God that you serve. So my brothers and my sisters, be encouraged. Stand strong. Shake yourself. And we together shall overcome. May God bless you, may have a smile upon you, and may the peace of God be a comfort to you as you enjoy the goodness of our God and our risen Savior. Again now, let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you. You feed the little bit of bird. You clothe the lily of the field. And you give us to see that Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed or dressed as one of them. We thank you, Lord, that we are your children. And your kingdom have come within us. Help us to realize how great you are and how loving you are. That we are your instruments in the earth. We can say what you said. We can be what you have ordained us to be. We are, no, we are just not no nobodies. We are somebody. Because you have washed us with the blood of the Lamb and made us whole. We seek you, Lord. We seek you today. Even the more. Even the more. And as we do so, We go in the peace of God, and we know that the peace of God goes with us. May God bless you now. 
I am Jesus happy for all of the wonderful things that the Lord has done. Amen and amen.